In this video, we're going to see how to import new products into Bright Pearl using an Excel file. First of all, we're going to have a look at the process, and then we're going to have a look at a few tips and tricks. So it's a four-step process. We need to create what we call a data map in Bright Pearl, which defines the columns we're going to import. Then we'll create the spreadsheet, save it, import the file in test mode to make sure the data is OK, and then finally import the file to actually create the products. So the first thing we need to do is create a data map. Go to Setup, and then Data slash Import, and then click In Products. This takes you to the list of data maps, where you can create a new data map or work with one of your existing ones. So let's have a look at the one we have at the moment. Let's click Edit. On the left-hand side, we can see the columns that this data map contains, skew through to a couple of price lists. And then on the right-hand side are columns that we can choose to add into this data map if we want to. Once you've built your data map, scroll down and click Save. Next, what you might want to do is click Export Sample, which gives you an Excel file that contains the column headers. So here's an empty XLS file into which we'd paste our data. We've got the product SKU, the name, the brand, category, whether we manage stock for these items or not, the item weight, and it doesn't matter what unit you use here as long as you're consistent, whether it's taxable or not in sales tax mode, or if you're in the UK or VAT countries, then the tax code itself, T1, T20 and so on, and then as many price lists as you choose to import, and the prices exclude tax. Save the file in XLS format, which in this version of Excel is called Excel 5 slash 95. And now you're ready to import. So, going back to our Bright Pearl account, from the data map screen, click Import on the data map we're going to use. On the left hand side, you can see all the column headers that we've got in our spreadsheet. And on the right hand side, we've got some options. Let's quickly run through these. The top one is the option we're going to use when we actually do the import. But if we don't tick that, it's just a test run. You can tick to be emailed a report, which is pretty useful. And then you can tick to skip items not found using the match column A, which is this skew, the first column. And you'd use that when you're updating data. So that's going to skip products that don't exist in Bright Pearl. But in this particular import, we want to create products, so we don't want to skip them. Just to clarify that, if a product is found in Bright Pearl with the same skew as the one you give in column A, that product will be updated, not created. You can also use other values in that first column, such as Bright Pearl product ID, which is useful if you're using a Bright Pearl product export for a further import to then update products. We've also got the option to create any missing brands and create any missing categories, so you can use the import to create this data. And then this final option here, we can choose to update data only rather than create products. So for now, we're just going to do a test run, import the file, and then upload. This uploads the file and then takes you back to the import screen where you've got any messages displayed on screen. So because we've got brands in the spreadsheet that don't exist in Brightpole, Cisco for example, we've got an error here so we can't create a product with that brand unless the brand exists. And similarly, telephones is not a valid category. So what we can actually do is re-import the file and create these from the spreadsheet. So let's untick skip items, but this time we're going to create missing brands and create missing categories. Upload the file. Well, we can see there are no problems. The brand Cisco has been added, the category telephones has been added, and also category routers has been added. We haven't yet created any products because we didn't tick the import values at the top. So this time we're going to actually import the file to create the products. Tick to import, untick skip items, choose the file, and then upload. We're taken back to the import screen where the message says that two products have been created. If I do a product search for the ones that I've just imported, we can see the products that we've just imported. Let's compare that to the spreadsheet file, which I've got at the bottom of the screen here. The SKU and the name. Managed stock has been selected as yes, which means that there's a number in here rather than a dash. And it's important to mention that inventory levels are imported as a separate step from creating products. The weight, the tax, and the prices, of course, have come in from our spreadsheet as well. If I drop into one of these products, 
we can see that the brand Cisco has been created, as well as a couple of categories, routers and telephones. Now that you've seen how it all works, let's go into a bit more detail. So this slide shows us the required columns that we need when we're creating new products in Brightpearl. That's the name, the brand and the category. The SKU is not actually required, but definitely recommended because it's what you use for uniquely identifying this product, both with later spreadsheet imports, but also as you integrate with other sales channels. Other recommended columns include your prices, don't forget prices exclude tax, whether you manage stock levels, yes or no. If you're in the UK, import the tax class. If you're in the US, import taxable, yes or no, one or zero. Import the weight, and don't forget variant information, such as size or color, and then it's quite often useful to import the supplier information too. Other things to bear in mind are that all products are imported with a default product type. If you want to update your products later to a certain product type, you can do so by importing the type as a custom field, then looking up these products by custom field and batch updating using the product list screen in Brightpearl. If you've got lots of products to import, we recommend a maximum of 1,000 items per file, and that speeds up the process. Make sure your import file is XL95, which is an XLS ending, not an XLSX. Make sure your XLS file has headers that match your data map, and the system will reject your file if they don't match. You can use the import process to create new values for brands, category, and option values, but you can't actually create the options themselves. So if size already exists, that's great, you can add small, medium, and large by import, but if size didn't exist, you'd actually have to create size first. Similarly, you need to create suppliers before you can import products and assign them to those suppliers. If you want to create lots of bundles from a spreadsheet, then create the products first and the components, and then import a later file to update those to connect the components into the bundle. And there's a separate video that shows you how to create bundles by spreadsheet. Let's also have a look at some tips for managing product data in Excel. So a good tip is not to start SKUs or barcodes with a zero because Excel often formats the cell as a number, which means you'll lose this leading zero. Product SKUs need to be less than 32 characters, and all products should have a unique SKU, and that's a unique SKU for each of your variants, so small, medium, and large would all have their own SKU. If you're importing categories, make sure the names are unique. Brightpearl doesn't support the import of hierarchical categories, so what you'll need to do is create your category structure in Brightpearl first, and then import the file to assign products to those categories. So before I show you another demo, there's an important note here about importing variants. So products with the same name are automatically grouped in Brightpearl into a product group, and each of those products becomes a variant. So each variant needs to have unique option values, and every variant must also have a value for all of the options. And to show you what I mean by that, let's have a look at this red example below. So we've got four products, let's say they all have the same name, variants A, B, C, and D. The first variant is size small, color red. Then we also have medium red, and we've got another size small and another size medium, but these ones don't have a color, which means that this grid is not fully populated. Every option does not have a value, and that's invalid, and the system will complain when you try to import that. If we imported red for these two, then again we'd not have unique values because we'd have variant A and variant C that were both small red. So what we need to do as per this green example, is to make sure that every option has a value and that every combination of these is unique. So now let's see how to import products with variants into Brightpearl. We've got a spreadsheet here that's very similar to the one we imported a while ago. And this first product here, the Sony phone, doesn't have any options. There's no size and no color. The generic phone case, however, these next three items, does have three different colors. It's not got any sizes, so that's fine. This is just a product that has a color. And then the final products, the tweed shooting cap, have size and color. And you can see that each of these variations are unique, and each of them has their own skew. So what I need to do now is go back to my data map and add the size and color columns. So from the data map screen, I just click Edit. And then on the right-hand side, because I already have color and size, I click the plus to add them to the left and then I need to make sure they're in the right order, so I just drag them around, we've got size and color, and then save. Going to import, gives me all the columns on the left hand side, which match my spreadsheet. I won't tick to import, I'll first of all do a test run, 
I'll untick skip items, but I'm going to tick create missing option values, which will add the colors and sizes if they don't already exist in Bright Pearl, create missing brands, and create missing categories. That's good practice to have those ticked if you know that your data is good. Let's choose the file, and then upload it. So just like before, it's added any values that were missing. We've added a brand, Sony, a category cases, a color that wasn't in Bright Pearl before, and then a category clothing, and then a further color. So it looks like all of our sizes were already in Bright Pearl. The next thing we need to do is actually import the file. So let's click to import, untick skip, choose the file, and then import. All eight products have been created successfully. So now let's do a product search for those cases. And here we've got three phone cases. See that they've all got the same name, which is what groups them into a product group. And then the color is red, black, or purple. Similarly, if I search for the cap, let's go for shooting. We can see four different shooting caps, each of which have got two different options. So size and color. So that takes us to the end of the video where we see how to create new products in Bright Pearl from an Excel file. There are a few other documents that are well worth reading. One is Understanding SKUs, so search on Google for that, Bright Pearl Understanding SKUs. And the other one is Managing Your Data, so designing your product database. Have a look at our resources area for more information.